Job 6, 1 to 4. Job said, It's impossible to weigh my misery and grief. They outweigh the sand along the beach. The fearsome arrows of God all-powerful had filled my soul with their poison. Nagduro sa si Job at sinasabi niya ang Diyos ang nagpaparusa sa kanya. That was Job's belief. That was Job's idea. It was his opinion. Religious belief would cause pain and fear. Ironically, kabalintunaan, kabaligtaran, maraming paniniwalang relihiyoso ang pinagmumulan ng takot, pinagmumulan ng hirap ng loob. Job's suffering was intensified as he ascribed it to God. Psalm 38, 1-4 When you are angry, Lord, please don't punish me or even correct me. You shot me with your arrows and you struck me with your hand. My body hurts all over because of your anger. Even the bone, my bones are in pain and my sins are so heavy that I am crushed. Here, the Psalms or the writer, the singer, presents his or their idea of God. And the psalmist's idea is that it is God causing all the suffering in life because of the perceived sin. Suffering could come from perceived anger of God. Nadodoble ang pagdurusa mo kung nahihirapan ka na tapos iniisip pa ang Diyos ang nagpapahirap kasi sa iyo. Kalaban mo ang Diyos, pinaparusahan ka ng Diyos. Psalm 51.3 I know about my sins and I cannot forget the burden of my guilt. Here, the issue of sin causes grave guilt. So the more conscious of sin, the more sin fixated a person, the more guilty. Matthew 23, 2-4, sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, The Pharisees and the teachers of the law are experts in the law of Moses. They pile heavy burdens on people's shoulders and won't lift a finger to help. Ano ang description dito ng Panginoong Yesus sa mga parisayo, mga teachers of the law of Moses, mga guro? Sila daw ang nagpapahirap sa buhay ng mga tao dahil pinagpapasan nila ang mga tao ng kutakot-takot ng mga laws and religious regulations. Tapos hindi naman nila sila tinutulungan na makasunod ang mga ito. Religious teachings and regulations coming from the Pharisees make life hard according to Jesus. Religion could pile heavy burdens on people. And that is a sad realization. Na mas maraming vexed, stressed, mas maraming conflicted sa mga religious more than the non-religious. Kasi ang daming baggage, ang daming guilt, ang daming bawal na kung tutuusin at magpapakatotoo lang, hindi naman talaga nasusunod. Matthew 23, 13 to 15, You Pharisees and teachers of the law of Moses are in for trouble, sabi ni Jesus. You're nothing but show-offs. You lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. You won't go in yourselves, and you keep others from going in. You travel over land and sea to win one follower. And when you have done so, you make that person twice as fit for hell as you are. Ang kausap ng Panginoon dito ay hindi mga satanista, hindi mga okultista, hindi mga mangkukulam. They are the mainstream, canonized, authorized, recognized religious leaders of Israel. At sabi nila, lagot kayo. Pinagsasara nyo ang mga tao ng pinto ng langit kasi kayo mismo hindi pumapasok. Punta kayo dito, punta kayo doon para kayo merong mahikayat, mahimok, makonvert, at pag nanalig sa inyo at naniwala, ginagawa niyong doble pang mas bagay sa impyerno kesa dati. Ang kausap ng Panginoon na religious leaders. These religious leaders are causing a lot of hardship and they are bringing hell into people's lives. In fact, they are sending people to hell, not to heaven. From the words of Jesus, kaya dapat natin pakinggan ng sobra, unawain. Malaking pahirap sa tao ang relihiyon pag hindi ayon sa tulo ni Jesus. Kaya ipinadala ang Panginoong Jesus ay para ituwid ang mali, iliko, ito, ita, 
Ituwid ang liko, itama ang mali, liwanagan ang madilim. Kasi kung tama na lahat yun, ba't pa siya ipapadala? So sinasabi ni ang Panginoon dito, dahil sa inyong mga wrong teachings, wrong ideas about God, you make your believers and followers' lives twice, twice as much like hell. Hindi kayo nakakaranas ng pag-ahari ng Diyos. Yung kaharian kasi ng Diyos, hindi lang yung pupuntahan mo pag namatay ka na, yung pag-ahari ng Diyos sa buhay mo ngayon. Sabi ng Panginoon, hindi kayo nakakaranas ng pag-ahari ng Diyos. Ang nakikinig sa inyo, hindi nakakaranas ng pag-ahari ng Diyos, lalo lang napapariwara. Misguided knowledge of God, misguided religiosity could actually rob people of peace and could cause grave misery. That's why there are a lot of religious wars because religion could turn people into warriors instead of lovers of others. Puro war, 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 warfare. Ang laman ng utak, kahit sa prayer nga, prayer warrior pa rin. Puro gera, puro paligsahan, puro contest. And when religious people are not at war with other religions or congregations, the war becomes local within one local congregation. Non-stop judging of each other, non-stop judging of self, non-stop guilt. Religiosity could lock people out of the kingdom of God, out of God's peace, out of God's love, out of God's serenity and rest. Religiosity could send people to their own hell in this life. As can be read in scripture and observed in life, religion or religiosity does not always bring peace and joy. Sadly. That's why it is observed that among many, many religious leaders, mas marami are people who go to psychiatrists. Conflicted, divided, living double lives. Kasi iba yung expectation ng law and the teachings at iba yung tunay na nangyayari sa aktual na buhay. That kind of religiosity, when misguided, opinionated about God, brings only misery. How to have peace despite religion? Dapat we can have peace because of religion. But the opposite happens. From the very mouth of Jesus, from the very mouth of the scriptures, nakikita natin yan, how can we have peace despite religion? Dear God, we thank you that you are God of peace, God of love. And we thank you that you have sent your son Jesus to be your perfect embodiment, that in him the fullness of you, O God, lives in bodily form. Teach us to temper our faith with the teachings of Jesus, to filter all religious ideas, no matter where they come from, with the teachings of Jesus. Teach us, Lord, so that we can have your peace, we can have your kingdom. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Jesus promises and gives real peace and rest. Jesus wants people to enjoy peace. And remember that Jesus is God's voice. The Bible says, In Him, the fullness of the deity lived in bodily form. That Jesus is the perfect image of the Father. That's why all religious ideas and doctrines and teachings, practices, should be filtered through the teachings of Jesus. And He says in John 14, 27, I give you peace. The kind of peace that only I can give. It isn't the peace that this world can give. So don't be worried or afraid. And when you say world, it doesn't only mean the ungodly world, but it also means the religious world, the system that prevails. At sabi ng Panginoon, ako lang makapagbigay sa inyo ng kapayapaan. Wala nang iba. Hindi kayang ibigay sa inyo ng lahat ng alam niyong sistema ang kapayapaan. Kaya no wonder, marami mga tao, very religious na, hindi pa rin tahimik ang loob. In fact, mas nagiging religyoso nga, mas gumugulo yung isip kumisan, at mas nadi ahati ang loob. Kasi, hindi kay Jesus kumukuha ng turo at hindi kay Jesus kumukuha ng mga kautosan. Matthew 11, 28-30 If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I'll give you rest. Sabi ni Jesus. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. 
Sasabihin na iba, ang hirap naman magpangyong makadyos, ang hirap naman na maging kristyano, pagka hirap na hirap ka, hindi yan galing kay Jesus. Kasi sabi ni Jesus, madali, magaan ang galing sa Kanya. Pwedeng gawin doable. Sabi niya, kaya ako napapagod na kayo sa mga religiosity na nakakapagpahirap ng loob, nakakapagpahati ng loob, na, nakakapagdusa, sa akin na kayo pumunta kasi sa akin lang kayo makakakita ng spirituality na nagbibigay ng kapayapaan at katahimikan. Most pain comes from rejecting of self. And many religious teachings demonize the self. Ang daming katuroan, minamasama ang katawan, minamasama ang buhay na ito, minamasama ang mundo, lahat, lahat, lahat masama, ang mabuti lang inasa kabilang buhay. Anong gagawin mo? Eh, nandito ka, may katawan ka, ito ang mundo mo. You will live in denial, you will live in hypocrisy and pretense. If religious teaching always teaches you to reject yourself and others, that you're always bad, that you're always kulang, lagi kang masama, paano ka matatahimik noon? Peace is in knowing, accepting, and living with, and being happy with the God-given, natural, personal realities. Pag kinilala mo ang iyong sarili, inalam mo, tinanggap mo, pinagdiwang mo na likha ka ng Diyos, na ang lahat ng likas sa iyo ay sa Diyos ang galing, hindi kayo satanas, dahil hindi naman si satanas ang nag-create sa iyo, doon ka lang matatahimik. Kasi pinapalaki tayo ng religion na lahat na lang ng ginagawa mo, iniisip mo galing kay Satan. Diyan po, satanic ka, kaya lahat. Nakikita mo si Satan sa isang tasang kape, sa paggalaw ng kortina, sa pag-ihip ng hangin. Lagi na lang si Satan, si Satan, si Satan. Kaya lagi kang takot. Lahat na lang ng iniisip mo, mali. Kaya marami mga tao, hinahampas ang sarili, lumuluhod sa asin, hinihiwa, nilalaslas ang laman, nagsusuot ng mga masisikip na belt sa kanilang hita, na may mga pantusok na mga bakal para huwag silang magkaroon ng mga physical desires, para huwag silang magkaroon ng appetite, para sa masamain nilang lahat ng bagay na may kinalaman sa katawan. Eh, Diyos nga ang lumika sa atin. Even a lot of the so-called Christian religious teachings, especially in the first three centuries, were very much influenced by the Greeks who demonized the body and glorified only the spiritual world. And that informed a lot of theology even of those Christians in the first three centuries. Masama ba ang katawan? Masama ba ang tao? Talaga bang ako'y dapat i-condemn? Psalm 139, 14-16 I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Of this, I have no doubt. Nothing about me is hidden from you. I was secretly woven together deep in the earth below. But with your own eyes, O God, you saw my body being formed. This sums it all up. Aming Diyos, aming Ama, kayo ang lumika sa akin. At wala kayong ginagawang pangit. Kaya maganda ako. Maganda ang aking pagkatao. Yung aking pagiging unique, pagiging iba sa karaniwan, yung pagiging ako ay ako, wala namang lingid sa inyo eh, kasi nung binubuo ako, kayo bumubuo sa akin. Therefore, I am wonderful. I am wonderfully made. Not to be proud, but not to overly reject oneself. The most religious teaching is reject yourself. You are bad, you are evil, you are bad, you are evil. Hampasin mo ang sarili mo, tikisin mo, makipagdiyara ka sa sarili mo, itatwa mo lahat ang nararamdaman mo, iniisip mo dahil masama lahat yan. So ang mangyayari talaga, grabbing stress, grabbing rejection, grabbing anxiety, and even depression. Kaya marami, habang lalong nagiging relihiyoso, mas sumasama ang ugali, mas lumulungkot, mas ako conflict, mas natatakot. Eh ang sabi ni Lord, do not fear. Have peace, kabaligtaran. Kaya dapat natin talagang suriin. Tayo ba ay nakasubscribe kay Jesus o kung kani-kanino, kaya tayo magulo? Peace is not in demonizing, rejecting and denying your and other people's personal realities. God created you. Romans 7, 15, 18-19 Sabi ni Paul mismo, In fact, I don't understand why I act the way I do. I don't do what I know is right. I do the things I hate. I know that my selfish desires won't let me do anything that is good. Even when I, when I want to do right, I cannot. 
Instead of doing what I know is right, I do wrong. Here is Paul, master of self-rejection, self-judgment. And no wonder that kind of rejection and judgment would also inform relationships with other people. That you would also reject other people and you would also label other people as always wrong. But the point is, ano kaya ang wrong sa palagay ni Paul sa ginagawa niya? Yung bang wrong sa palagay niya ay wrong talaga sa tingin ng Diyos? O yung kanyang pananaw sa wrong, sa right ay informed din ng mga prevalent religious beliefs around him. Kasi wala na kahit isang tama, puro mali. Eh Diyos nga ang lumikha sa atin. Maraming religious teachings, even in scripture, coming from various authors, various prophets, various disciples, have to be filtered also through the teachings of Jesus. Because Jesus is the only perfect teacher. He is the only true and perfect image of the Father. Sila Pedro, may mga maling sinabi, ikinrek ni Lord. Yung mga prophets, sinasabihin ng Diyos, ang mga tinuturo nyo, hindi galing sa akin. Ha? You are inventing doctrines made by men. So hindi ko mo sinabi ng prophet, sinabi ng teacher, mga human beings, hindi lahat yon are to be taken as 100% in error. Dapat filter through the teachings of Jesus. At doon natin makukuha yung sobrang self-rejection from the teachers whose concepts, or ideas, and doctrines were informed by the prevalent cultures and philosophies around them and in their society. Kasi kung tama na lahat yan, ba't pa'y pinadala si Jesus? Ba't sinasabi niya sa mga Pharisees, you are sending people to hell instead of bringing them to heaven. Your teachings are making life horrible and you are putting burdens on people. And these were the organized, official, religious leaders of the nation. Kaya kailangan tayo manuri, mga kapatid. Kasi you will know them by their fruits. Ano ba ang fruits sa atin na ating pananalig? Peace ba? Rest? Love o kabaligtaran? And in many occasions, Paul demonizes his human nature, which he could not overcome, according to him anyway, no matter how hard he tries. And if you are in this kind of mode of thinking, you will be miserable. You will never have peace. The result of this religiosity is agony. Sobrang pagdurusa. That's why all throughout the history of the Christian church, Many people were trying to solve this issue of self-rejection by always punishing the body. Excessive, non-stop fasting, excessive denial of all the appetites that God, the creator of the body, placed there for us to survive and to procreate. Excessive rejection of anything that is nice and enjoyable and pleasurable as if it's coming from the devil. Solomon comes into the picture, a fresh wind in the entire New Testament period, Old Testament rather, and he says, why don't you enjoy life? Eat, drink, be happy. This is God's gift to you. And did you know that Ecclesiastes almost did not make it to the official canon of the Jewish Bible? Because many conservative Jews did not want the teachings of Solomon. And Solomon says, God's gift for you is to enjoy your life, have a good time with your wife. And if you must die, then die. But enjoy life before you die. That was what Solomon was saying. He was the closest in the Old Testament among the many teachers there to the teachings of Jesus. Romans 15.7 Honor God by accepting each other as Christ has accepted you. High religion is to accept each other as God through Christ accepts you. It means accepting yourself and accepting others. Of course, you accept yourself first before you could accept others because you cannot give what you do not have. This is the direct opposite of what usual religion teaches, which is to reject others. Do not accept them, judge them, punish them because they are sinful. Lots of religious teachings demonize, judge, reject, punish, and problematize human nature, as if human beings are problems, contradicting natural human character as created by God. And many people in their religiosity always spit the spirit against the flesh. Para bang magkalaban ng espiritu at katawan, ipinagsama nga yan ng Diyos para magkasama. The spirit is created 
to be with the body. And when the spirit and the body are joined together, you have a living human being. When the spirit departs, the body dies, there is no more human life. So yun lamang formula na pinagsasama yung espiritu at katawan na ideya yun ng Diyos. Pagkatapos ang laging ginagawa ng religion, pinagkakagalit ang spirit at ang body. Kaya hindi magkasundo forever. At sabi naman ni Jeremiah 13.23, sa laging gustong baguhi ng kanilang nature, can people change the color of their skin? Or can a leopard remove its spots? Of course, the answer is no. You cannot change if you were born that way. Created that way. You did not make yourself. God made you. How can you unmake what God made? And many religious teachings are always to change, change, change. Jesus teaches accept, accept, accept. And if somebody is short of your expectation, forgive, forgive, forgive. Love, love, love. That is the tenet of Jesus. Ecclesiastes 7.13 Think of what God has done. If God makes something crooked, can you make it straight? Again, the obvious answer is no. If you think what God has done is crooked, there's no way you can make it straight. God made it, it will be that way. It will remain that way. Live with it. And if you can, enjoy it, celebrate it. And then meet your maker when you die. You would have lived a full life then. For instance, how can you change nature to make it good according to your taste? Is a lion bad because it eats gazelles? Masama ba ang buwaya dahil kumakain siya ng halimbawa ay kung ano mang mga hayop na pwede niyang kainin? Eh nilikha yung leon na leon. Anong gagawin mo sa leon? Pakainin mo salad? Why will you demonize the lion for being a lion? God created the cosmos, the universe, even the diversity of life and the balance of all living beings. Kaya pagka wangawalang ahas, dumadami ang mga palaka. Nag-overpopulate. Pag nauubos naman ng palaka, walang kumakain ng lamok. Ganun talaga yung nature, di ba? Kainan ng kainan, recycle ng recycle. Will you demonize a tiger for hunting its prey? The tiger was created that way. Now, will you demonize yourself for the many natural bodily processes that you go through as a living being? Which is what many religious concepts do. That's why people are always divided inside. Lots of religious teachings problem problematize human nature, insisting that human nature should and could be changed through religious practice. This is always the promise. God will change you. Join our church. God will change you. You will change. Join the retreat. You will change. Join this group. You will change. Well, because of all the singing and all the prayer and all the emotional hype, there is some semblance of change that happens. But what begins to happen after one week, two weeks, three weeks, when you go home from the retreat, then you say, ay, hindi nag-effect sa akin yung retreat. Ay, bad na naman ako. Ay, masama na naman ako. And you begin to feel bad over and over again. So you will need the retreat. You will need a prayer, an overnight prayer, every now and then to get your fix. And yet, nobody really gets it to the point that it is always there to give you peace. Baka naman hindi yun ang pinapangako. You are over-expecting and probably you want to change something that God does not even want to change. Kaya dapat reviewin natin para hindi tayo laging hirap na hirap, guilting, guilty, kulang na kulang, at judge ang judge ang kapwa. To always insist that you will be changed. Lagi na lang, dumaan ako sa isang Christian bookstore, nakalagay sa label sa labas, books that will change your life. Why do we always want to change people? That's why people are always miserable, because they're always short of expectation, because they are not really changing if they're honest to themselves. At least to the point that they are expected to change. And of course, this fails. This always fails. That's why many people are always living in misery and in needless guilt. Even Paul says it about himself. Sabi ni Paul, gusto kong bumait pero di ko magawa. 
Pero ang point, baka naman mabait ka na. Sobrang bait lang ang ina-expect mo. Ano ba talagang ina-expect mo sa sarili mo? Can a leopard change its spots? Kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon sa mga teachers ng Israel, Matthew 23-24, You blind leaders, you strain out a small gnat or a fly, but swallow a camel. Mga bulag kayo, sinasala-sala nyo pa yung mga maliliit na mga niknik at mga insekto, pero buong-buong kamelyo, nalululun nyo naman. Sobra mga expectation, pinapalaki nyo yung maliit na bagay. At yung tunay na malalaki, hindi nyo pinapansin, tulad ng magpatawad, umibig, magkaroon ng kapayapaan. Hindi nyo pinapansin yan. Yung mga nitty-gritty details of religious law, ang lagi nyo ini-impose, hinahanap ang mga nagkakamali, inuusig. Paano kayo matatahimik pa ganyan? Religiosity imposes guilt and crushing mental agony when it is misguided. Psalm 32, 3-4 Before I confessed my sins, my bones felt limp and I groaned all day long. Night and day your hand weighed heavily on me and my strength was gone as in the summer heat. O sino na naman ang pinagbibintangan itong psalmist na nagpapahirap sa kanya? Diyos na naman. Pinapahirapan niyo ako, ang napiglupit niyo. Nung hindi pa ako nagtatapat na kasalanan ko, parang dinadagalan ako ng mundo. Pero nung nagtapat ako, gumaan ang aking pakiramdam. Ganun ba lang talaga yun? O condition yung tao na pag nagtapat siya, gagaan na, kaya gumagaan. Tapos condition siya na pag ginawa niya to, masama siya, kaya guma- sumasama ang nararamdaman niya. Pag kinumbinsin mo yung leon na masamang kumain ng usa, ito yung kakain siya ng usa, masama ng pakiramdam niya. Pero hindi naman niya ma- Pigil lang kumain ng usak kasi yun talaga ang pagkain niya. So, laging may conflict siya sa sarili. Sasabihin mo pa sa leon, Hoy, huwag kang kumain niya. Dapat vegetarian ka. But the lion was made that way. Born that way. Even relief after confession is a religious construct. It could also be a product of mental conditioning. The thing is to be very, very studious. To say which of this, when filtered through the teachings of Jesus, should be universally and can be universally applied. Which should be considered as a cultural, a geographical, a historical quirk that belong to one period in time but does not universally belong to all people at all time in all places. Kailangan maroon ka contextualize ng kaalaman ng Bible kung hindi mo oppress ka. John 5.45, Jesus says, Don't think that I will be the one to accuse you to the Father. You have to put your hope in Mo- you have put your hope in Moses, yet he is the very one who will accuse you. Jesus is very clear about the law. He says, "My only law is love, so I will never, I will never accuse you before the Father." But mahilig kayo sa religion, mahilig kayo sa law of Moses, so yung law of Moses ay nawagakyos sa inyo, because you have conditioned your conscience that this is bad. Because it's what the law says, whenever you do it, even you do it because it's the natural thing to do, you will feel bad about it, you will be accused by your conscience, you will be accused by your subscription to the law. Romans 7.24, Paul says, What a miserable person I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is doomed to die? And he has an answer, Jesus rescues me. Not only because this body is evil, Jesus will also rescue me from a misconception about the body, about life, about God's creation. Because the body is always demonized in the usual religious belief. Even Greek philosophy encouraged that kind of demonization of anything that was physical, pleasurable, or transient. But human nature is God-designed and God-given. You were created by God. Yang katabi nyo, created by God. Yang nasa likuran nyo, created by God. Whether you agree or not, tingnan nyo nga mabuti yung mga katabi nyo na yan. Likaya ng Diyos. And God is not a God of sameness. God is God of variety. Kaya iba-iba tayo. Hindi ko mo iba siya, mali na siya. Hindi ko mo iba siya, demonic na siya. Iba-iba. Pati nga yung mga yunok, those 
males who are underdeveloped in their sexuality because of many reasons, ang sabi ni Jesus, Matthew 19, 12, for some are eunuchs because they were born that way. Jesus saying that. They were born that way. Anong gagawin mo dyan? Born that way yan. Others have been made that way by men and others have renounced marriage or have chosen to live like eunuchs because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. Sabi ni Lord, ganyan talaga. Ganyan na yan. Sinilang yan ganyan. Hindi mo yan may iba. Meron naman naging ganyan by conditioning. So meron, ano daw ba? Nature or nurture? Both. Merong nature, merong nurture, at meron willful decision. Yun ang kinakalagyan natin sa buhay ngayon eh. Either ganyan ka, kasi pisingin lang kang ganyan, o na-create kang ganyan ng iyong environment, so whatever is created can be recreated. Whatever is made can be unmade. Tapos meron naman daw, choice na kasi yan. So, hindi siya born that way, hindi siya ginawang ganyan na environment, pinili niya ang ganyan. So, Sa anumang alarangan ng ating buhay, may mga ganun. Meron talagang born that way, yung sobrang relax. Nagkakasunog na, relax pa. Yung wala nang pang-enroll ang anak bukas, tahimik pa ang buhay niya. Yung asawa niya, worried na, worried na. Kasi born that way din, born warrior. Meron naman na born relaxed. Yung kahit, ganun, ganun ang pagkatao, kahit nga sa psychology, may mga classification of people, ganun talaga. Climatic, sanguine, etc., etc. Iba-iba ang response. Kaya nga, pag may nagtatanong sa akin, dito, paano ko ba pipiliin yung papakasalan ko? Hanapin mo yung mga inborn nature niya. At kung gusto mo yon, pakasalan mo. Kung ayaw mo nun, huwag pakasalan kasi hindi yan magbabago. Can a leopard change its spots? No. Makakakit po yung napangasawa ko, ang tamad-tamad. Eh, nung binatabayin, masipag, hindi po. Eh, nature. Pasensya ka. Hindi mo na yung mapapalitan. Walang nababago ang pag-ibig. Kala mo lang yung guli-guli mo lang. Ano, ganda lang. Nabago mo ang kapwa mo. Kaya dapat hindi mo, ano ba yung nature niya? Pag yung nature niya, gusto ko, eh, forever, magugustuhan ko siya kasi hanggang mamatay na siya, yun na siya. May nature siya. May na mabago, may na-improve, pero only up to a point. You cannot make structural changes, especially mga inborn traits. Mga anak na gustong, mga magulang na gustong baguhin yung anak para magswak sa kanilang kagustuhan. Hindi mangyayari yun. Ang trabaho ng mga magulang, to accept your own children, not to reject them. E kung kayong magulang, i-reject yung anak nyo, sino pa mag-a-accept yan? Mali kasi mga pananaw natin ito sa ating mga pagkatao. Psalm 9911 The heavens and the earth belong to you, and so does the world with all its people, because you created them. Ang lahat ng tao, nilika ng Diyos. Tapos, papapaniwalaan tayo na may paborito, may itinatangi, mahal ng Diyos ang lahat ng tao, nilika niya ang lahat ng tao. Kaya nung sinolo ng Israel ang Diyos, ang sabi ni Jesus, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, ends of the earth. Ibig, ibalik niyo ang Diyos sa lahat ng tao sa buong sang sinukob kasi ang Diyos ay para sa lahat. Kasi ang tagal-tagal na sinolo ng Israel, parang sila lang ang anak ng Diyos. Kaya ang utos ni Jesus, you will be my witnesses. Okay, here in Jerusalem, in, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. At ang utos, you will be my witnesses, not you will be my soldiers. Hindi ibig sabihin, you will forcibly convert people na ginawa ng Christianity. Na hanggang ngayon, ang dami pang religious wars. Hindi naman kasi si Jesus sinusunod kahit ng maraming Christians. So what do you do? How can we have peace? Identify religion imposed, but unnatural and impossible expectations. Impositions. On and demonization, rejection and denial of human nature, and refer, submit them to the truth of Jesus. It's a mouthful. Ibig sabihin lang, Suriin mo kung ano yung mga katangian mo at katangian ng iba na gustong-gusto mong baguhin, pero hindi naman pala talaga dapat at kailangan baguhin kasi nilika siya ng Diyos na ganun. At ano man yung mga kaugalian, asal natin, padaan ninyo sa salaan ni Kristo, examine it through the love, the prism, the sieve, the salaan of Jesus, at lahat ng lalampas, pwede yung ipamuhay. 
be selective in subscription to religious teachings. That's why Jesus was sent to fine tune his spirituality. Use the Jesus filter. Romans 7 7. If it had not been for the law, I would not have known what sin is really like. For example, I would not have known what it means to want something that belongs to someone else unless the law had told me not to do this. Sabi niya, kung hindi lang naman may law, di wala sana akong kasalanan. Kaya ako may kasalanan kasi may law. May law, tapos hindi ko naman kaya ang sundin. E di, ang ending ko, sinner. Malinaw ang pagkakaunawa niya. Hinulay ko ng pulis kasi nagpark ako dyan. Eh kasi naman may nakalagay na no parking. Tanggalin mo yung no parking, di walang huhuli sa akin. Sabi niya, kaya ako nagiging makasalanan dahil sa mga laws na yan. Kung wala yung law, di hindi ako makasalanan. And the law is the embodiment of the unnatural and impossible expectation of religion. Romans 7.4 You are now part of the body of Christ and are dead to the power of the law. Bakit dead ang example? Because when you are dead, the law has no power over you anymore. Pag may utang ka, o oh, hindi ka na masisigil kasi patay ka na. Gusto mong makalaya sa asawa mo, eh di mamatay ka dahil hanggang kamatayan lamang ng kasal. Diba? Pagkapatay ka na, hindi ka na under the law. So pag ang tao namatay, hindi na under the law. Kaya sinabi dito, you are now dead to the power of the law. Wala nang effect sa'yo ang law of Moses. Naintindihan mo ba yung Christian? Tapos araw-araw yun, itunupukol mo sa kapwa mo, sa sarili mo, binabato mo sa sarili mo, inuumpog mo yung sarili mo sa law. Sabi niya, you are not now part of the body of Christ. You are dead to the law. Romans 7, 6, But the law no longer rules over us. We are like dead people. And it cannot, take any, cannot have any power over us. Now, we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit and not in the old way by obeying the written law. May mas lilinaw pa kaya doon? Sabi, hindi na tayo sakop ng nakasulat na batas na yan. Bakit laging yan ang reference? Bakit laging yan ang pinaghihirapan at laging pampahirap sa kapwa? Yung law na nabagong ibinigay ni Jesus ang umiiral, and it's only one law, the law of love. Love God, love others as you love yourself. That is the whole law. Actually, that has always been the whole law, but they missed it. Sinuplayan nila ang dami-dami mga detalye, anong gagawin mo sa buhok mo, anong kakainin mo, anong hindi mo kakainin, sinong pwede mong pakasalan. Sa ganoon, hindi na kayo nasa ilalim ng mga ganyan. Bakit patuloy kayo ng bumabalik-balik? Isaiah 45.9 You have no right to argue with your Creator when it comes to your human nature. You are merely a clay pot shaped by a potter. The clay doesn't ask, why did you make me this way? Where are the handles? So, eh, palayo ka lang. Ang Diyos ang gumagawa ng palayo. Kung paano kang ginawa, enjoy it, love it, celebrate it. At huwag kang makialam. So, bakit ako ganito? Ba't hindi ako ganun? Ganyan ka kasi Diyos ang nagpasya na ganyan ka. Therefore, hindi ka mali. Kung minsan, may mga nagagawa kang mali-mali. But your basic character, your basic personality is not wrong because God created you. So, free yourself from tiring, oppressive, crushing, and suffocating Needless guilt for being human. Hindi dapat nakakagilty maging human kasi tayo ay nilikha ng Diyos na maging human. Do not deny all human feelings, human emotions, human desires. Just don't steal or kill to follow your desire. Because your right ends when it infringes upon the rights of others. But you have all the right to be yourself, so long as you don't steal and kill and you don't infringe upon the rights of other people. Free yourself from destructive impositions of religiosity by the loving way, truth, and life of Jesus. John 6.20 But he said, I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. It can be applied in nearly every situation in life. Sasabihin ng Panginoon, I am Jesus, I am the Son of God, I am your Savior, I am your friend. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Don't be afraid to be less than perfect. 
I know you are less than perfect. That's why my perfection covers you. Don't be afraid that you commit an error, that you fall. I know that. That's why I died for you. Don't be afraid that you will be made punished for your sins because I already took all the punishment. Don't be afraid. I am Jesus. I am your friend. I am on your side. Kakampi mo ako. John 14, 27. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Tapos mga Christian, laging afraid sa end of the world. Afraid sa ganito, afraid sa ganon. Magbublumon lang, naglilinyalinyal yung mga planeta, natatakot. Magkakaroon lang ng eclipse, natatakot. Paulit-ulit. You know, the most often repeated teaching of Jesus is this, do not fear. So if you're always afraid, it means you are not following Jesus. Maybe you are following Moses. At dapat ka talagang matakot pag si Moses ang idol mo kasi ang daming batas and surely hindi mo susunod araw-araw. John 8, 31-36 Jesus told the people who had faith in Him, If you keep on obeying what I have said, you truly are my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus is the truth. Jesus sets free. They answered, We are Abraham's children. We have never been anyone's slaves. How can you say we will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you for certain that anyone who sins is a slave of sin. And slaves don't stay in the family forever, though the son will always remain with the family. If the son sets, gives you freedom, you are free. What is the idea? If you subscribe to the law, you will always be short. You will always sin. And you will be punished for your sin because you are subscribing to that economy. But if you subscribe to me, if my law of love will rule your life, you are free from the laws that make you a sinner because I have removed all the laws and give you only one law, love. That love, first I apply to you, then I empower you to apply to others, and I expect you to apply to others. So be free from the concept and the oppression of the concept of sin. Marami mga Christian, laging sin ang laman ng utak, binayara na nga ng Panginoon eh. Mayroon pa mga t-shirt na kalagay, God saw what you did. Nakaka-stress yun ha? God saw what you did. Sabi niya, pagka kayo pinalaya ako na, malaya na kayo. Now, this freedom in Christ is not a license to be evil, to do wrong. It empowers us to do right, to be who we are, and to stop rejecting ourselves and other people. But it's not a license. It's not a, a blank check for us to do anything crazy or evil. Alam natin yun. And anyone who experiences God's love will never abuse that kind of love. Kasi nga, love yung mga rurol sa buhay mo. Sa mga ba, paano po pag sinabi natin yan that we are free from the law, baka magwala lahat? No. Because we subscribe to a higher law, the law of love. Paano ka magwawala kung under the law of love ka? You will be loving. Law. The law stops you from doing bad. Only. The law of love does not only stop you from doing bad, but prods you to do good. Kaya superior siya. So know and accept, like and celebrate, and be thankful for your human nature. 99% of Christian religious thought goes against this. But this is what Jesus teaches. And you know how he dramatized that? The first miracle of Jesus was not to make the sick get well. It was not to make the lame walk, the blind see. It was to make wine. How dramatic can you be? The people were having a hard life. The only respite, the only rest and break from hard labor is when somebody gets married and throws a party. Free good food, free wine, there's music, there's dancing. Rest from the toils of daily life. Suddenly, the wine runs out. Mary, the mother, goes to Jesus and says, They have number wine. This is tragedy. 
the party will end. And you know the rest of the story. Jesus created wine from water. So sabihin mga iba, that's not so profound to be the first miracle. But that's it. It's not about being profound. Jesusness is about being kind to people. About making them see the beauty of life and enjoy life and enjoy each other's company. There was no religious great symbolism there. But Jesus was underlining a truth. I care about your daily life. You're having fun, extend it. Even if it will have to be the first miracle, I'll do it. That's how Jesus loves people. Hahanapan pa siya mga religious leaders ng mga reason. What is the theological reason behind this miracle? It's not profound enough. It's not godly enough. It's not spiritual enough. But that's precisely why Jesus came. To bring the kingdom of God to daily life. To where it matters. To where people are hurting. To where people are in pain and suffering. To give them rest. To give them peace. Kaya huwag na natin laging masama yung nararamdaman natin. Laging minamasama, lagi tayong guilty. May dumaan lang, nagandahan ka, guilty ka na. Eh talagang, gada nag-create ng ganun kwasi mga attraction. Huwag mo lang dakmain. Pero hindi nakakagilty, na-attract ka kasi buhay ka eh. Psalm 8.5, You made us a little lower than yourself, and you have crowned us with glory and honor. Ganun daw nilika ng Diyos ang tao. Psalm 100, verse 3, You know the Lord is good. He created us, and we belong to Him. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. So mga kapatid, magkali naman gan tayo bago kayo mag-graduate. Alam nyo sa atin ang graduation, madedo. Okay? Be human, which means you are spirit and body, while on earth, while in the body, and be just and only a spirit when in eternity. Habang nandito kayo sa lupa, tao kayo, ang ibig sabihin ng tao, magkasama ang spirit at katawan, do not demonize the body. Harmonize. Do not put your body and spirit at war. Harmonize them. So be human. Meaning, yes, you are a spirit, but you're also a body. At pag nalang nadedo ka na, doon ka nalang maging full spirit. Pero ngayon, buhay ka pa, may body ka pa, don't deny that. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. So our bodies return to the earth, and the life-giving breath returns to God when you die. But you are not dead yet, you are still a combination of body and spirit. Do not demonize the body. Matthew 22, 30. When God raises people to life, they will be like the angels in heaven. So doon ka palang magiging tulad ng anghel. Dito, tingnan nyo ang katabi nyo, alam nyo kung ano pang katulad talaga natin, di ba? Sabi ni Jesus, when you die, you will be like the angels. But heaven can wait. Hindi ka pa anghel. Huwag kang magpaka-anghel. Magpakatao ka lang. That is good enough. Masama bang maging tao? Eh, nilikha ka nga ng Diyos na tao. So be human and let and allow others to be human too. Accept, enjoy, and celebrate even their humanity. Matthew 7, 1 to 2. Don't condemn others and God won't condemn you. God will be as hard on you as you are on others. He will treat you exactly as you treat them. So gusto mo maging maluwag ang Diyos sa'yo, maging maluwag ka rin sa iba. And this is not about official duties, ha? Siyempre sa official duty, kailan mahigpit ka. Kasi may mga policies, ang kumpanya, empleyado kayo to implement it. This is about your personal life. Personally. Not na pulis ka, maluwag ka, hindi ka na manghuli ng gumagawa ng mali. No, iba yung profession. Sa personal life ito. Be nice, be good. The way you want God to be nice to you. Romans 14, 1 and 13. Sa church daw, ah. Welcome all the Lord's followers, even those whose faith, faith is weak. Don't criticize them for having beliefs that are different from yours. 
We must stop judging others. We must also make up our minds not to upset anyone's faith. Kita nyo utos, yung bagi ginagawa ng mga Kristiyano, baliktad. Sabi, tanggapin nyo, mahalin nyo ang isa't isa, kahit magkakaiba kayo ng mga point of view, iba kayo mga paniniwala. Diyos ang bahala sa inyo. Huwag kayong maghusga sa isa't isa. Tumigil kayo ng panghusga sa isa't isa, kahit hindi kayo isang ayon sa kanilang paniniwala. At huwag nyong guluhin ng kanilang paniniwala. Alam nyo, what is a very unkind thing to do is to upset somebody who is already set on his or her faith. Tahimik na siya, payapa na siya, guguluhin nyo pa. Alam mo ba na masamang magpatato ng kilay? Eh, may tattoo yung tao. Araw gabi na nanaginip siya na tinutusok-tusok siya ng tinidor ni Satanas kasi yung kilay niya, tattoo. So, niya, don't upset people's faith. Managot siya sa Diyos sa kilay niya. Kung talaga nagagalit ka ang Diyos sa kilay na yan, sa so, palagay niyo, God who rules heaven and earth is really concerned about your kilay. Kung anong kinain mo, anong ganito mo, ang dami nating inimbentong mga mito tungkol sa Diyos. Ginawa natin siyang katatakutan. Ginawa natin siyang horror. At ginagawa natin siyang panako tulad ng God saw what you did. Kaya tuloy na wala yung saya, yung ganda ng pananalig. Matthew 7.12 Treat others as you want them to treat you. This is what the law and the prophets are all about. God wants us to enjoy our religiosity, our spirituality, but we have a homework to do. We must examine and filter all religious teachings that are in our mind. Filter them through Jesus. Only that which passes through Jesus can give you peace and joy and rest. That which comes from Moses and his likes will only make you needlessly guilty, will turn you into judges of others, and will make your life miserable. Don't condemn others as sinners per your religious standards. Such standards in all their variants will be applied on you. Madalas, twisted religiosity ang nagpapahirap sa buhay. Kaya may mga taong dati, ang ganda ng karakter na naging religious, naging mahirap kasama, kasundo, masungit, pintasera, ang dami nagiging negative effect. Kaya alam mo, ay, hindi Jesus yan. Iba yung nagahari sa buhay. Now, don't expect impossible holiness from others and from yourself. God remembers that we are dust. Isn't it nice? The Bible says, and God remembers that we are dust. Alam niya, yes, may spirit tayo, pero yes, meron din tayong flesh. And God remembers that and factors that in dealing with us. Make your religious belief a blessing, not a curse. Make your spirituality an aid to empower you to enjoy life and be enjoyed by others, not to be a miserable companion because you are like a Pharisee. And this is really what peace, joy, and happiness is all about, despite religion. Because of God's love through Jesus. This really is freedom in Jesus. Be free, people of God. Review your prisons, your chains, because they might be needless. The love of God sets us free, not to become licentious, not to become evil, but to be the best persons we can be as God created us. You begin with accepting yourself, your humanness, your humanity, and even your human frailties. God remembers that you are dust. Stop rejecting yourself. Stop rejecting others. Bask in the love of God and let that love overflow in your life so that others around you will also experience God through you. Mabuhay ang Panginoon. Enjoy Jesus.